I welcome you all to our today's workshop titled Tips and Tricks on Writing Story Plots. To moderate this workshop, I'm Anna Mahmed with you, lecturer, Department of English, Leading University, Silet. It's our immense pleasure to have with us this evening a great resource person, Professor Shamsad Mortuja, who kindly consented to conduct this workshop as a support from ITFL, Research Seek to TSLBD Research Seek. Now let us introduce our today's facilitator to you. Our today's facilitator is Professor Shamsad Mortuja. Professor Shamsad Mortuja is Pro Vice Chancellor and the Dean of the School of Arts and Humanities, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh, currently on leave from the University of Dhaka. Dr. Mortuja has previously taught at many universities, including his alma mater, Jahanginabha University, where he was the chair of the Department of English between 2005 and 2008. As a Fulbright scholar, he pursued his second MA in American Indian Studies at the University of Arizona. His doctoral thesis was The Figure of the Shaman in Contemporary British Poetry from Burke Beck College, the University of London, and was published by Cambridge Scholars Publishers. He received a second Fulbright to attend UCLA as a senior visiting postdoctoral fellow. He has authored six books, published numerous articles and book chapters in reputed national and international journals. He is the editor of ULEV Journal of English Studies, Crossings, and serves on the editorial board of the literary journal, Six Seasons Review. He writes a popular weekly column, Blowing in the Wind, for the Daily Star. So without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Shamsad Mortuja to kindly start his workshop. And if you have any questions, please, uh, you can drop in the chat box. We'll get back to you. Over to you, sir, please. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for the generous uh, introduction. Can you see my screen? Like, no, is it? Yes, sir. It's visible. Great. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying that, you know, so I feel like that proverbial fool who has rushed in. Uh, but then again, uh, this is something that we need to do uh, on a regular basis because art is dirty and somebody has to do it. You know, that's how it goes. Uh, I know like, you know, so uh, this is meant for like, you know, uh, big, you know, budding writers. So uh, please bear with me, like, you know, maybe you might find them like, you know, redundant. But what I plan to do today uh, is to go to the basics and uh, talk a little bit about plot. Now, before I move on, I don't know like you know, how interactive uh, this session would be because uh, uh, this virtual session, I'm, I'm new to this technology. All right, so what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word plot? I know Said Bhai knows a lot about plot. So uh, he's one of our landlords, like, you know, I suppose. So this idea of you know, plots, uh, when you think about having a plot in Boshundhara, like, you know, one of those residential areas, I think, like, you know, one of the best use of the uh, word plot is available in John Kitts, you know, so in Ode to a Nightingale. Um, what does this, this idea of plot mean in Kitts's poem, Ode to a Nightingale? So in some melodious plot, of beach and green and shadows numberless, singers of summer in full throated ease. Any response to that? Like, you know, what does it mean, the word plot in this particular poem? You need to help me because otherwise, like, you know, this will not be a workshop. This will just be a shop where I am working. So, or else I'll have to just speak on my students, like Rafi, like, you know, respond well, to Rafi this. Rafi is here. <laughs> Rafi is here. Right. Rafi. So some melodious plot. Are we talking about the land, piece of land, or just the setting of a forest? What's going on with this word plot here?
audience can actually unmute and participate because this is a workshop. Yes. You're free to unmute and talk. Yes, and also you can use the chat room, of course. Yeah, you can also use chat box. Right. Okay, so structure. No. So Rafi has said structure. Okay, anything else? Do you see that you know there is this use of pun, like in you know, a double meaning here with this idea of plot? Those of you who know this poem, like an you know, ode to a nightingale, so it starts with, you know, this my heart aches. You know, so there's this idea that you know uh, the the song of the bird has caused this serious heartache in the poetic persona, right? So the plotting could be a conspiracy also, like, you know, so if you take it as an irony, so this idea that, you know, the bird has this melodious plot, so it no, can we, be- Shabdhai, We already got three responses in the chat box. Really? Okay. And many Let's... more is coming, I can see that. Okay, so you got a scheme, yeah, absolutely setting, right. But, setting, so, foundation, somebody wrote about foundation. Foundation, setting, setting. scheme, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, so the, the, I, I would rather be interested in this idea of this scheming, you know, so whether this uh, has a double meaning of uh, plotting as a scheme. And of course, the foundation of something, the setting of something, well done. All right, so let's move to the next idea. So uh, this is blocking. Now, Albert Einstein, so he once said that nothing happens until something moves. So in order for a plot to be a structure, so it's not only a foundation that stays somewhere like in a, in a static manner. So in a story, when we think of a plot, it is something that moves. It is actually a journey from point A to point B. Now that does not necessarily have to be a linear journey. Okay, so the journey can go into many directions as we will find out soon enough. Right. Now, do you have any comment at this point in time? So if you think that nothing happens until something moves, so a story needs to move in order for a story to be a story. So the journey from point A to point B. So do, do you all agree? Okay, so Saibhai, you need to help me with the chat room, like if you find any comment, because yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, okay. I think Somebody wrote pretty... that there is a sequence of events. Very good. So it is a sequence of events. So uh, that is a very good way of uh, explaining plot. But here is Ian Foster, you know, and he has a very interesting idea of. Uh, uh, rather, he exemplifies the plot with this uh, line, like, you know, so if you, it is a, just a sequence of story uh, events, so it can be a story, but there is a difference between a story and a plot. So for Forrester, you know, so who writes in aspects of the novel saying that the king died and then the queen died is a story. So if you just have a sequence of events, so you have a dead king, and then you have a dead queen, you have a sequence, that for Forster is a story. But in order for a story to be a plot, you need something else. So what is that? So the king died and then queen died of grief is a plot. Now, why do you think I have red mark of grief? because that is causality, right? So according to uh, E.M. Foster, so there is a cause and effect. So in order for a plot, so again, so this cause and effect, again, my heart aches, and then you have the melodious uh, plot. So after listening to the song of the nightingale, so the persona in that particular poem, so it can be John Keats, you know, in Hammersmith, it may not be, but the idea is that there was an effect of that particular you know, action. So when we think of the king died and then the queen died, 
So we have a chronology of events. So that is a story. But the moment we add a cause and effect, so of grief, so we are plotting. Okay. So we are entering the realm of plot. Now, Forster is smart enough to add further by saying that, well, the queen died and no one knew why until it was discovered that it was through grief at the death of the king. So it does not have to be uh, sequential. So you can actually reverse the sequence, you know, in order to have a plot. Right. So any thought at this point in time? Any comment? Okay. Uh, all right, nothing useful for me. Anyway, so this idea is that, okay, so it's about cause and effect. So I think that particular idea is you know, clear. So you cannot have a story like you know if you know something if there's something uh, nothing to happen right so for there to be a story something's got to happen right so why do we need this plot so why do you need this cause and effect and what makes something to happen is what we call narrative conflict right so what make you know things move is that conflict so this is again another element that you know, a budding writer needs to keep in mind that narrative conflict is what makes it happen. So this can be a conflict between characters, right? So for example, you have a Prince Charming, you know, and then, you know, he has an, um, you know, an ex and who decides to break up the marriage. So you have characters, so you have a bride and you have an ex, you know, there's a conflict between characters and the result or the effect is, you know, a broken marriage. Uh, it can be an internal conflict. Hamlet is an, you know, a great example. Uh, for example, if you twist the story of Cinderella, you know, so you can think that, you know, Cinderella is depressed and so she has a drinking problem. So that can be, you know, the internal conflict of a character. Or it can be an external conflict, all right? So we can have a flood, disease, dragon attacks, like you now our COVID. So all these things, like, you know, so you have no control over things. So there, there is an impersonal force out there. And, uh, you know, so this is impacting on uh, the uh, characters. So that can be another way of uh, understanding this cause and effect. Okay, so let me check on the chat room. Yes. All right. Our structuralist Hamid Bhai has uh, talked about the, I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple, but yes, you're very right. The Bartesian is said. Okay. So the most popular one uh, that we know of is Freitag's you know, pyramid structure. So when we talk about plotting, when we talk about a structure in a story, you know, we know about this, you know, so famous pyramid in which, you know, we talk about the rising action, the conflict, you know, the dynamic, the, you know, so we all know about this, right? And uh, we can exemplify through Hamlet's meeting of the ghost, you know, so the ghost telling him, you know, uh, that about the death of his father, the suspicious death of his father. But then again, the conflict is, how reliable is the ghost? You know, so uh, even you know in the 16th century, so ghost as a supernatural character, you cannot fully rely on your source. So you need the mousetrap. So you need kind of a psycho psychological test, like you know whether the king is really guilty or not, right? So the rising action, and then you know Polonius is killed. So that's where the climax is reached. And then the falling action. Okay, so, you know, Hamlet sent to England, you know, so, and then 
all the killings happen. So finally, you come to a kind, kind of a resolution. But when you reach there, so you find that the uh, throne is left empty and uh, the Norwegian prince, like, you know, so uh, on his way back, finds an empty throne. So what is the real tragedy there? You know, so the royalty has killed one another and somebody else has come out of the border and taken over, right? So the story is moving in many different directions, right? So it's a personal story of revenge. Uh, it's a political story. So there are many, you know, uh, strings of the story, you know, that, you know, which are interconnected to create the plot, right? So I'm trying to be get basically, you know, co cover the basics, but at this point in time, what I'd like to do, I would like to share a clip. I hope it works. Okay. Can you see my video? No. No? No. All right. uh, most stories are made up of multiple threads because single th All Right, a second. So, uh, which screen are you seeing? So, sorry, I usually use. Uh, can you see Kurt Vonnegut? Yes, we, we can just see this slide, Shamshadri. Oh, Chef just the slide. Yeah. And has created a body of work of starting. Uh, minimize the slide. Maybe we will be able to see. Okay. Uh, you need to minimize the slides, or maybe right. share. Can you, can you see it now? Uh, it's... Can you see? The YouTube video? Yes, sir. It's not yet. It's loading, maybe. And that's... You can give the link. We can also share if you want. Oh, that would be great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for being a lifesaver. Hakeem, can you make the host? Yeah, because. Yeah, this is a short video of. Uh, you know, Kurt Vonnegut, and here- So you can share the about... screen. Okay. Yes, can you please share? Okay. But do I need to stop sharing? Yeah, you give this stop sharing and then I'm sharing All right. myself. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Let me just see whether I can do that. I think I can do that. So share the sound. This is the video, Shamsad Bhai? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, so I'm sharing it. And it's super fun. I have to stop myself from using it too often because I really like it. First thing I like about Doodly is the fact that it was easy to learn. Right away, I made my first video. I uploaded it to social media. I was able to share my work with my friends. I'm a real estate agent and I use Doodly all the time. Skip ad. Yeah. Yes. Sir, can I share it? It's done already. That is the uh, auto, auto has created a body of work of startling eccentricity and universal appeal. His singular view of the world applies not just to his stories and characters, but to some of his theories as well. Well, there's no reason why the simple shapes of story can't be fed into computers. They are beautiful shapes. <coughs> this is the GI axis, good fortune, ill fortune. Sickness and poverty down here, wealth and, and boisterous good health up there. Here's the very middle. Now, this is the BE axis. B stands for beginning. <laughs> e stands for electricity. <laughs> now, this is an exercise in relativity, really, is the shape of the curves of what matters and not their origins. So we'll start a little above average, is why, why get a depressing person? We'll start <coughs> the whole thing. We call this story man in hole, but it needn't be about a man and it needn't be about somebody getting into a hole. But it's just a good way to remember it. 
somebody gets into trouble, gets out of it again. People love that story. <laughs> they never get sick of it. All right, not copyrighted. Another story, also a beautiful curve and easily fed into a computer called Boy Gets Girl, but it needn't be that. Just a way to remember it. Start on an average day, average person not expecting anything to happen a day like any other. Find something wonderful, just loves it. Oh, God damn it. Got it back again. <laughs> People like that. Now, these are beautiful curves, and this gets a little complicated. Is computers can now play chess, so I don't know why they can't digest this very difficult curve I'm going to draw for you now. And it so happens that this is the most popular story in our civilization, Western civilization, as we love to hear this story every time it's retold. Somebody makes another million dollars. You're welcome to do it. Now, surprisingly enough, I've said it's depressing. You know, people don't like stories below, about below average days and people. But we're going to start way down here. Worse than that, who is so low? It's a little girl. What's happened? Her mother has died. Her father has remarried. Uh, vile-tempered, ugly woman with, with two nasty daughters, big daughters. You've heard it. See? Anyway, there's a party at the palace that night. She can't go. She has to help everybody else get ready. She has to stay home. Now, does she sink lower? No. She's a staunch little girl, and she has had the maximum whack from fate, which is the loss of her mother. She, she can't go any lower than that. Okay, so the fairy godmother comes. Gives her shoes, gives her stocking, gives her <laughs> mascara. <laughs> gives her means of transportation. Goes to the party. Dances with the prince, has a swell time. Boring, 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 boring. Now, there's a slight inclination to that line as I've drawn it because it takes perhaps 20 seconds, 30 seconds for a grandfather clock to strike 12. Does she wind up at the same level? Of course not. She will remember that dance for the rest of her life. Now, she poops along on this level till the prince comes to shoe fits. She achieves off-scale happiness. My job. Thank you. Can you can you let me share my yes. screen? Right. Yes. Great. You can do that. Okay. Thank you. Great. Can you see my slide now? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Okay. So, what do you think of uh, the shapes of a story by Kurt Vonnegut? You know, so he he's he just said like you know these are the only shapes that you can find uh, in stories. Any thoughts? So the first plot that he talked about, you know, so, uh, so he had this graph saying that you know good fortunes and ill fortunes, right? And basically he started saying that, you know, if you want to be a popular writer, you know, so people do not really like to see uh, poor people, you know, so you better start somewhere in the middle between good fortune and ill fortunes. And then like, you know, you can have a conflict, you know, so your fate can, you know, have an accident and like, you know, so it can deep down. So you find yourself in a deep hole and eventually get out of that hole, that's the most um, usual plot that we get to see, right? Uh, this is a popular one. So this is uh, sheer success according to Kurt Bonnick. Then the next plot that he talks about, uh, again, so similar curve, 
but you start so the beginning is like you know in the middle all right and then you know you dip down uh something miraculous happens like you know so you fall in love you know and uh, because you have fallen in love you have found something then like you know uh you get into a conflict situation and you come out of it so that's the second one that he talks about the third one he talks about is that cinderella story that you know so in order to find your happiness so uh it's like a rags to riches kind of thing so the girl is in misery and uh she had supernatural help divine help uh goes to the party goes to the ball and then you know so the clock strikes midnight he loses the magical power again back to her rags eventually the shoes fit in she finds uh you know happiness or entropy actually that that's the word he uses in the larger lecture what is interesting about uh this plot you know this particular plot again you have this rags to uh, riches but there are some external uh you know elements uh they out there there is another plot that uh kart mentioned in in the larger version which uh you know he published later on is the kafkaesque story so the uh the story of metamorphosis you know so it's not always you get to see someone uh having good fortune at the end so the resolution does not have to end in happiness so you can have a pessimistic story like uh the metamorphosis where you know so you start low and end low so that is the other uh shape of a story that uh he mentions okay so what's your reaction to these uh different shapes any comment any there is a comment by kaji okay rahman in the chat box why are we so attracted why we feed ourselves such obvious plot stories why sinless carve hit such a popularity among people that's a good question you know so uh, there are certain archetypal motifs like you know beauty and the beast or cinderella you know uh, you know so the, for example the beauty and the beast if there are 25000 variants uh, of this particular motif so why like you know so i'm i'm actually curious to know why do you think such basic motifs appeal to us even after all these days you know for example pretty women julia roberts that is a cinderella story right so it's the cinderella story retold and uh, what happens in cinderella like you know you have the two sisters so they become the foil you can you know understand uh, that uh cinderella is good when you have the two evil sisters right so similarly like you know how is julia roberts different from the other prostitutes right so what um, um makes it different okay so why is she adorable why is she lovable so when she goes to the you know um that boutique shop and even though she had money she could not buy a dress so you feel sympathy for her just like we feel sympathy for cinderella who is basically ella who lives next to the cinders right so deep down there there are certain uh you know bonds uh that you know strike a raw nerve in us you know so that would be my take like you know what's your take like and i'm curious to know uh why do you think that is the case please uh speak up like you, know, you need to use the mic and like you know speak up otherwise like you know uh it will be just me escape from re reality yes that's a good point like you know so we all want to escape from reality so in the fantasy world but anything about this particular plot 
it is a fairy tale. So we want to think that, you know, so change is possible. You know, so there is a Prince Charming out there uh, who will take me to a ball and uh, the right size, you know, the shoes. So that's impossible. Like, you know, how can you have a particular shoes that simply fits my feet and no, nobody else's uh, feet? So the Mr. Right is out there. So there are some hidden desires, perhaps. You know? So those desires uh, creates a sense of longing. And uh, that longing uh, finds some sort of externalization when we come across a story like this. Do you agree? Um, I would also like to say something uh, like in the video also we saw like attainment of unlimited happiness, infinite happiness. So I think as I uh, like as a reader of Cinderella or any uh, fantasy book, I think uh, I was sympathetic towards Cinderella because uh, ultimately she attains that happiness. So I, uh, through, I also want to attain happiness. So these books, uh, if somehow the other characters, they who are bad turned into good and attained happiness, then maybe I would be sympathetic towards them or maybe I would like them uh, more. But uh, because uh, as a human being, I think we are very uh, prone that, you know, we like to like those uh, or like to like a plot, which ultimately will give me happiness. Yeah, so. Yeah, so yes, you're absolutely right. So it's kind of a wish fulfillment, right? Yeah. So you, you have that um, innate desire to be happy. And uh, so you find some sort of connection between the character. So yes, empathy is like, you know, one of the basic, um, you know, goals of, you know, doing literature, you know, so yes, I fully agree. Anything else? Shape of Platt will- so another uh, comment. My profile, yes, I'm looking at it. Uh, shape of plot we are interested in, or is it how the shape has been formed, expressed that we are interested in? So it's Shamsul Uh That's a very interesting comment because, uh, again, so the relationship between form and content. You know, so if you look at things like, you know, so we essentially have two things like body and soul, right? So the form and the content. So is it the form that defines the content or is it the content that defines the form. So this is a modernist debate. Um, uh, I think, you know, that demands a separate uh, discussion. Uh, but thank you for raising that. Uh, so let me move to another way of describing uh, plot. And this has been done by uh, Mary Robinette Kowal. And she described, uh, this is actually from a lecture on creative writing, on short stories, actually science fiction. And she uses computer coding in order to describe a uh, plot, right? And uh, there are like, you know, four quarters, you know, so the mice uh, quotient, that's, that's what she calls it. So I'm basically saying that, you know, instead of getting into the shapes, so, she's talking about different ways of coding. So the basic coded areas are either milieu, the setting where a character enters a place and leaves a place, right? So usually in a uh, travelogue, like around the world in 80 days or Gulliver's Travels, right? So one way to initiate a plot would be the milieu, right? Now, if you're a writer, so, the challenge for you is to delay the process. So the character wants to move from point A to point B, right? And if you're a writer, so if you just say that, okay, I'm going from here to Dhaka University, point A to point B, okay, so there is an accident on the road, you know, I was supposed to attend a meeting, I could not attend it. so. The writer, you know, his or her job is to simply delay the arrival. So the destination, so you cannot go there, you know, on time or in time. So the entire process is you create a conflict. 
you know so the conflict could be an external conflict like an accident it can be an uh, internal conflict you have a change of heart you do not want to go, you know go there all right so you have decided you know so maybe somebody is waiting for you there is an interview and suddenly like you think that no i'm not going to attend the interview so that can be an internal conflict as well right so that's milieu the second thing according to Barry is inquiry right so this is more like a murder mystery or even to some extent hamlet can fall into this category where it's all about asking a question and trying to find an answer right so the challenge if you're a writer so you pose a question and you look for an answer so how do you plot because this is you know uh, a creative writing you know session and eventually so the output of this workshop should be you know you trying to write a story and uh, one way to plan your story plot your story you know come up with a melodious plot is to find an answer for a question that you may have so that's the second uh, thing that you know uh, miss koval talks about the third element is character so where you're journeying from a deep angst you know to self realization so we have certain conflicts going on internally and eventually so you come to a realization about your pain your anger your whatever you're going through you know so if you have a character oriented plot so it's all about coming to a self realization so you are conflicted inside you know so something is going inside and um, eventually you come to a conclusion about it so that would be a character oriented plot there can be event oriented plot as well where the action is stalled by an external threat right so as a writer if you're writing it so the challenge for you is to create enough obstacles right so your challenge is to create obstacles just like the mill you want you know so uh, you create events more events so that you know so uh, the destination cannot be reached you know so in a given time so it's almost again like in a hamlet so this uh, uh, subplots going to england all right so the yurik going to the graveyard so you create events uh, and uh, create hurdles for the destination to be uh, deferred and delayed okay any thought on this one now as i said that you know so uh very like you know so she explained this in coding terms and so she used that you know the coding language to describe this milieu and inquiry so you open up the milieu all right then you open another inquiry and then you close that and then close the inquiry close the milieu so it's almost like a matryoshka like in a so, so story within a story story within a story and so fine first you unpack it you get into like you know from one story you go to another story from one event you go to another event and finally you have to like you know put all the you know matryoshkas uh the dolls into back into the you know mother doll right so that's another way of like you know uh coming up with a plot and i would like to share and uh, so she gives this you know template if you are a budding writer so how do you get into your story so i'm not going into detail about this whole idea of how you code your stories how you keep on um you know creating a milieu and then you know so you do your inquiry and then like you know uh, from act 1 to act 2 like you know, how you do it you know so uh, the details are actually given in the link so i'm not going into that but what i would like to do uh, is play this video a bit like you know uh, again let me share with with this will work this time can you see yeah just share the sound from your computer 
Right. Fred's stories are really boring. Can you hear? Click. Work. All right. So this was uh, the lecture that I was referring to. All right. So how do you do it? Now, for a lot of people in the room, this will explain how you do it. For those of you who do not do computers, let me give you a different analogy. Uh, so this is nesting code. If you open milieu and then you open inquiry, you have to close the inquiry before you can close the milieu. If you think about it as getting a box and the box is labeled milieu on the outside of it and you open it up and there are a bunch of milieu toys and then inside is a smaller box filled with inquiry toys. And you open that up and you pull out those inquiry toys and then you play with all of them while you're telling your story. And then at the end of the day, you have to put them back in the box. So you wanna put the inquiry ones back into that smaller box so it will fit inside the larger box with the milieu. It's kind of like trying to return something to Ikea after you've, if you don't get it all back in the box, you wind up with that extra piece. And why are there so many Allen wrenches? <laughs> all right, so to use a concrete example, click. Wizard of Oz is a beautifully nested story. It begins as a character story. Click. Dorothy is dissatisfied with her role as a Kansas farm girl. Then we open the event, tornado. Then we open the will you, welcome to Oz. And then we open the inquiry. What do the ruby slippers do? Click. At the end of the story, Glinda arrives and says, oh, the ruby slippers will carry you home. <laughs> Which honestly she could have said at the beginning and would have saved everybody a lot of time, but it does close the inquiry. Then we close the milieu by Dorothy leaving Oz, and then we close the event by arriving back in Kansas, where the status quo has been restored. And then Dorothy says, I didn't need to go looking any farther for adventure than my own backyard, closing character. When you have stories click that feel like they end and then end again, and then end again, <laughs> not thinking of any films in particular, it's often because that ending sequence is out of sync. One of the things that actually happens to this one is that it is closing out things in a faithful order to a film that you haven't seen in quite some time. That's one of the reasons it is. it feels out of sync. The other thing that will happen is, you remember those boxes. If you think about it instead as actual thread, the, the longer, or a piece of elastic, the longer I'm stretching that piece of elastic, the more tension it's under. So when I release it, it's releasing more energy. That piece of thread, that elastic thread is your reader's attention. So the longer that attention has been under stress, the more of a cathartic release you're gonna get at the end. So if you've released something early, you don't actually have enough time to get another piece of thread up to that same tension because you aren't spending as much time with it, which is why sometimes a story will feel like it just fizzles out. That's the end of the PowerPoint. All right. Okay, so what do you think of uh, this concept of nesting and coding? So the Wizard of the Oz, and I, I wanted to play that uh, video because it explains uh, this nesting process. Like, you know, when we are doing a plot, so don't just assume that, you know, they just one event, you know, and caused by just one external conflict and coming to some sort of resolution. So that would be too simplistic, right? So when we are reading a story, like, you know, you need to understand that, you know, writing is fractal, right? So, uh, you take it as a unit and that unit can be replicated. You know, uh, even a simple paragraph, like you know, how the paragraph can becomes an essay and the essay becomes a chapter, the chapter becomes a book. So the same thing applies to stories also, right? So even like, you know, if you're writing a flash fiction, like you know, a small portion of something, so you can have the seeds of um, the conflict, you know, in that particular composition. So you can have the setting, the milieu, you can have the inquiry, you can have the events and the, you know, so um, the characters, you know? So I wanted to use this as a frame to give you the tips and tricks for, uh, 
you know, new writers. So when you are writing, you know, so one way to start your story is, you know, to start with a completely like you no know, blank uh, mind, you know, so you just allow your stream of consciousness to run its own course. So that's free writing. And I'm sure like, you know, we do it in our composition class, right? So one of the clustering uh, that we do in as a free writing activity. So free writing is of course, uh, one of the ways to think of your plot. Uh, so the plot is like, you know, there is no plot, all right? But if you're a new writer, the other way of, you know, starting your writing is to think of a point of view and uh, you can change the viewing lens. So if you have a story and you think that, okay, say for example, what is the cat thinking while looking at me? So instead of, you know, me writing an essay on the cow, so what is the cow thinking when I'm about to slaughter it during the Korbani, right? So I think like, you know, I'm beating the animal. So what, what, what is that animal doing? Looking at this human, like at that particular moment, who is more animal, right? So you can change the lens, right? So we talk about moving from point A to point B. So you can change the lens and think of the journey from point B to point A. So that's another way of plotting. Uh, the other way is using a prompt, right? So if you are a young writer, a new writer, you know, so what you can do, uh, you can randomly use like, you know, one particular line of a classic text, you know, like, you know, um, who's there in Hamlet, right? So you start with this idea, like, you know, who's there? Right, so uh, Professor Shogata talked about alterity. So who's there, right? So you think that you, know, you, you can actually think of Hamlet as a mystery novel, right? It's all about who's there. So there is a ghost out there. So what is a ghost? So ghost is a nobody. So what is nobody? The so ghost does not have a body, nobody, right? So this idea that like, you know, something like, you know, that you can touch and you cannot touch, like, you know, in-betweenness. So you can use that, you know, a random thought and start from there. Then, you know, you can follow one of the shapes of the stories that Kurt Vonnegut talked about, you know, so you can dip it down, take it up, you know, so you can uh, use a different curvature for your story. So that's another way of doing it. Sometimes like, you know, it's easier if you use your own memory you know, so instead of using other characters, so if you're really uh, looking for a plot outside of yourself, so look no further, like, you know, look at your own self and maybe like, you know, uh, a 50 year old man looking at his own 15 year old self and having a dialogue, right? So you write a letter, so this can be an email, okay, so you, talk to your younger self. So that can be another way of plotting. Another very popular, like, you know, especially with this uh, pop culture and uh, postmodernism. So we get to see that many of the uh, classics being retold, right? So recycling old stories. So just like I said that, you know, the Cinderella story has been uh, remade into Julia Roberts' um, uh, Pretty Woman, right? So recycling old stories. So that's uh, very popular. Uh, I just mentioned the idea of fractal. So sometimes you can use flash fiction. You know, so flash fiction, so you, you, know, you restrict yourself to simply 150 to 500 words. All right? So the, the word limit, like, you know, so there are different theories about it. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but as Hemingway, like, you know, so he wrote that shortest short story you know, baby shoes, you know, for sale. So that, that kind of idea that you have that six word story. So the idea that 
you know, sometimes you can maintain that triangular shape of beginning, middle, and end, even within, you know, a short span of time, short span of space, right? So you can write a flash fiction. And of course, uh, one way, like, you know, because of this hypertext, because of like, you know, somebody was mentioning earlier that, you know, how technology has revolutionized uh, literature, our expression. So if you are a budding writer, if you are a young writer, so you can use social media in order to express yourself and you create a feedback nexus, you know, so uh, where you receive uh, energy from your audience, from your reader, you know, you get feedback from your reader and use that, weave that into your own creativity. So that would be a different way of plotting, right? So the root word for text and textile is the same. So it's all about uh, weaving. So, you know, uh, doing that. So let me just go to the chat room, like, you know, just to see, like, you know, I can see about fan fictions. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, all right. Seeing things from an empathetic point of view too, yes. Is there anything that I have missed? Right. Okay. I don't think like, you know, there is anything for me. All right. So how much time do I have? Okay. So I, I about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, perhaps? Yes, 15 minutes. Sir. Okay. Right. Yes, so, 15 minutes. Okay, so basically like, you know, I'm actually done with my slides. So what I want you to do, because this is a workshop, like, you know, so uh, uh, you should do your bit also. Uh, I was just thinking like, you know, is it possible to plot something together, right? So we just talked about recycling and uh, let us just write like, you know, four or five sentences, but let's change the lens, change the, uh, you know, optics a bit uh, if you are looking at that character, I'm sure that you all know that story. So choose a character, you know, so it could be the fairy godmother, it could be the pumpkin, it could be the mouse that was turned into a horse, you know, so it could be one of the sisters, maybe the stepmother. So uh, who do you think, you know, is going to be your central character? And once you have done that, you know, think of an action, you know, so for example, uh, the horse, you know, so the mouse has transformed into a horse. So what is the horse thinking? What is the horse going to do? Okay, so uh, that horse has no control over his transformation or, or over its transformation. So it's under the spell of the uh, fairy, right? And then like, you know, what obstacles prevent that goal from, you know, that, that uh, realization, like, you know, so you want uh, this character to go somewhere and uh, basically the conflicts, right? But when you're doing it, uh, please come up with, uh, out of that, you know, so uh, composition class mindset of the seven C's, you know, that clarity, coherence. So in literature classroom, so maybe like, you know, uh, keeping it short and simple, uh, you know, so that's not always uh, a good thing. All right. So we make mess up, mess up things in the literature classroom. And that's like, you know, maybe one of the bone of contention, right? So we are messy people. And that's why like, you know, so Saibhai does not like me, right? So uh, the floor is open. So I'm going to keep an eye on the chat room. Maybe I'm, uh, we give you five minutes to Pick a character from Cinderella, uh, use some sensory details and think of an action. And uh, why do you think that that action is being delayed? We use uh, breakout rooms or like in the chat box will be fine. I think chat room is fine because uh, we have not created okay. breakout rooms. So I pay if you can moderate this particular session you know, or Hafsa. Hafsa is here, Hafsa? Yes, I am. 
have surface. No? We need to just take some people because otherwise nobody will talk. Yes, so basically you have to choose one of the characters from Cinderella. Okay, good. So we already have some responses. So Nusrat, so the stepmother as being the negative role, she's the one who intrigues the Zil in Cinderella to go. Okay, so uh, you need to use it as a short story, like you know, uh, the genre, like, and I actually I should have mentioned it. So you, you needed to do it as a short story or a you know, micro fiction or flash fiction. Okay, but yes, yeah, so you're giving me the plot, right? Not the way she made me. Okay. So Nusrat is basically saying that uh, in a way, the stepmother is doing some good for Cinderella, her evilness is bringing the goodness out of her, okay? So the horse, is a mind reader who sends Cinderella's revenge, whatever it is, and hides the shoes. That's interesting, Rafi. Okay, good. So what do you think the horse is thinking? So give me a first line. So Nusratiya, same goes for you. So think of just the opening line of your story. So uh, Cinderella, the stepmother, thinks that he's almost like a drill sergeant in army. You know, so making sure that, you know, so she brings out the best out of Cinderella, you know, so she may appear very mean, but, you know, ultimately, like, you know, uh, she's doing something good for Cinderella. That's one way of looking at it, of course. Yes. Rafiq, can you give me just one sentence? What would be your uh, opening sentence if the horse is a mind reader? That's very good. So Cinderella and Princess Diana, so they have similar stories. Okay. Maybe Harry and Meghan is a you know, better analogy now. Uh, one is from fantasy, another is from real life inspiration. Both cases, empathy is a common element. Male protagonist in much of action. Huh, okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> okay, so Professor Hill. So Prince Charming put his 
So, sir, do you mind reading it out? Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, of course. Prince Charming put his head in his hands and a loud sigh escaped his mouth. Trapped, trapped in marriage. That beautiful young girl who has captivated him turned out to be just a beautiful young girl. No soul, no mind. And now the prince met his soulmate, but too late. How could an impetuous marriage stand in the way of his happiness? I know who can help me, thought the prince. The fairy godmother. Dot, wow. dot, dot. <laughs> that's amazing. You know, you have done it in less than five minutes. You know, that's like instant coffee. Right? <laughs> Wonderful. You know, so you're Prince Charming here. Okay. Thank you for sharing. So, uh, Mr. Ajit Chandra Vishesh, do you mind uh, reading yours? Ajit? Ajit, can you please read it? Yes. You've got to unmute, please. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello. <clears throat> So with a wicked stepmother and two jealous stepsisters who keep her enslaved and in rags, Cinderella stands no chance of attending the royal ball. When her fairy godmother appears and magically transforms her reality into a dream, comes through Cinderella enchants the handsome Prince Charming at the ball. So this is a basically a description, right? So you did not change the point of view or anything. So yeah, okay, but good attempt. Uh, Okay, we have Orchi Raman, the fairy godmother, instead of changing Cinderella's appearance, changes the stepmother and sisters. That's interesting. They still attend the party. Everyone looks down on them. They have a horrible night. They realize how awful they have been to Cinderella and changes behavior. Cinderella stays the same, yet her surrounding and environment changes and all of them band together to change the perspective of others at the party. All right, so if it is a fiction, how do you do that? Like, you know, uh, why that change of heart in those two sisters? Ah, deep, deep. So Rafi, you have, been, you have a helper. So I'm a little tired of the in, in, inane chatter that goes on in the minds of this young girl. Ha. Huh. It's interesting. Thank you. Good. So the horse is tired of being in chatter that goes in the mind of this young girl. Okay. Nice. But how do you make it like, you know, interesting? Like if, we, if it is to be the first sentence of your story, you know, so uh, if you look at, you know, Professor Hill's, you know, first line. So Prince Charming put his, head in his hands. So the sensory detail that I mentioned, all right? So there is enough description to help you visualize the uh, milieu and a loud sigh escaped his mouth, right? So in order for your writing to be interesting, so you need to free the imagination of your reader. reader. And in order to do that, you need to give sensory detail. So the details that will appeal to the senses of your reader trapped you know so then like you know so suddenly like you know there is a change of pace and trapped you know you can visualize this idea that you know of being you know trapped in marriage so this reputation beautiful use of reputation you know that beautiful young girl who has captivated him turned out to be just a beautiful young girl right it's almost like you know the ugly swan kind of thing but no soul, no mind. And now the prince met his soul met, but too late. How could an impetuous marriage stand in the way of his happiness? I know who can help me, thought the prince, the fairy godmother. 
So it's a prince now who's looking for the fairy godmother. So the, the twist is there, right? So yeah, so it's all about twists and turns, you know? Uh, okay, let me just look at Nusrat. The rageful mother called for Cinderella. Come out of your hole, you check, okay? Mend my daughter's dresses, okay? Great, okay, much better now. Tasina. So fairy godmother walks around in her age-old velvet, exasperated at the prospect of providing help to all these nagging humans, crying their hearts out, seeking divine help. When you'll ever be free of doing this. Okay, so I think about what I desire. Well done, Tasina. Okay, so I knew she was up to something. So this is the horse thinking not Rafi, okay? And it's not something she would easily let go, but I could never think she could ever be so vindictive that she will even manage the prince to get her mom in trouble. All the stepmom she fed her was thinking the horse. Well done. Uh, the world is a brutal place where those can survive who fight for themselves and snatch their rights. Oh, here is the child, fresh, little, pure. Should I embrace her with my heart? So who's the speaker, Nasreen? The stepmother. Ah, okay. Great. Okay. Um, Shasha, sir, if you allow me, I would like yes. to, um, you know, share my thoughts. Actually, I'm not a writer. I never wrote any uh, stories in my life. But I was just thinking, you know, uh, uh, inspired by your presentation. And I wrote a few sentences, but not like a story, but just, you know, I was thinking uh, about the plot you know um, something a little bit different maybe so and probably you know my point of view will be Cinderella's father you know and um, you know uh, Cinderella's mother is stepmother you know is very kind caring and supportive though she is the stepmother and um, she's not ready Cinderella is not ready to accept her yet as her mother biological mother got divorced from her father not so long ago and she interferes constantly you know, and her stepsisters are in a similar situation. Also. Um, and uh, so the father is in dilemma and doesn't know what to do. He keeps uh, on working till late hours at office to avoid, you know, facing everyone. And so now the father turns to the fairy godmother, you know, to get some help. So that was what I was just thinking, um, you know, not like a story, but just looking yeah, at it, uh, you know, from a, a nice perspective. No, uh, basically this workshop is for young writers, right? And uh, so the idea is that, you know, often we look for ideas, we struggle for ideas. And uh, this is a great place to start. Like, you know, when you have a tried and tested story and when you play around it, you know, so uh, the familiarity of it and also the act of defamiliarization, uh, that actually helps. You know, so when you read it, it's saying that that's not how the story goes. You know, this is not how I have read it. But then again, like, you know, it uh, gets your attention and then you try to understand, like, you know, why this is happening the way it is happening. So, yes. So thanks for sharing that. Like, you know, so uh, looking at from the perspective of uh, the father. All right. So Orchie has written, uh, shocked and speechless. Sisters are on the verge of crying. They have not lost wealth, but suddenly their appearance is poor. All the other participants of the party are verbally abusing them and making fun of them. One of them, you know, says that they look exactly like Cinderella. The stepmother yells out, how dare you speak to us like that? Okay. Yeah. So it's very interesting. So the uh, perspective changes. And it happens actually in the uh, Disney version, right? So these two sisters are like, you know, laughed upon, like, you know, so, yeah. So uh, on the similar way, I, I think like, you know, so... My time is up. So uh, thank you for giving me the plot, uh, Tisol BD. And uh, thank you, Said Bhai. Thank you, Hafsa, Hamid Bhai. It's good to see all of my old friends uh, from different workplaces. And also, like, you know, I'm so happy to meet some uh, new friends from different parts of the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you sir. Uh, for the wonderful thank you very worship. much Ramshad, sir you know i feel like writing something for the first time in my life all right thank you Absa. thank you sir it gave us a lot of insights i'm sure that the budding writers uh, 
must have some takeaways from here. So now I would like to humbly request Dr. Sheikh Mehdi Hassan Kanpanner, uh, Lead Sikh Tissel Society of Bangladesh, and Associate Professor, Department of English, Language and Literature, Jaffi Hobi University, Islam University, uh, for, the, for giving the vote of thanks. Over to you, sir, please. Okay, thank you, Anand. Uh, what should I say? It's simply amazing. Uh, really, it's uh, really amazing the way Professor Shamsud uh, went deep into the mazes of laws and he specified all the aspects of story writing. Uh, and I'm sure that we all are mesmerized during his presentation. We're really privileged to have uh, you, sir, as a chief. Uh, as your guest of honor. And uh, also we are so happy on behalf of uh, Native Sikh that it started with such a wonderful and interactive workshop. Uh, he practically en engaged the participants in working towards even building the plots. And uh, we have seen that uh, you know, actively most of the participants responded, even they came up with uh, short write-ups. Uh, Professor Shamshad Mottuza, already we uh, heard his detailed bio. He's currently provost chancellor and dean uh, the School of Arts and Humanities, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. We are so grateful to you, sir. Uh, and our uh, some of the special guests that you already <clears throat> listened to their insightful words, and encouraging words, uh, Kathy Mayer uh, Tokero, who uh, even talked about gender issues and so many other contemporary issues uh, that underscore the interdisciplinary nature of literary studies, uh, who is assistant professor uh, of Mindano State University, Philippines. Uh, we also enjoyed the uh, encouraging words that uh, Mr. Robert Hill, delivered uh, for us. He is the coordinator, uh, IRT Full Literature SIG. He even uh, gave us advice and uh, also uh, described the aims and objectives of IRT Full Lit SIG. And really, uh, we got a lot of information from uh, him and a lot of suggestions that we will uh, try to uh, apply uh, in improving our uh, own sake. Uh, and we are so thankful and so grateful, uh, Mr. Robert Hill. And then um, I would like to give a special th thanks to Professor Shabata Haduri, who joined uh, us. And also, uh, he looked at literature from multiple perspectives. And that gave us a lot of insights, new perspectives of, and, and insights into uh, into literary studies, and who is uh, from Jawaharlal Nehru University, and we are really uh, thankful to you. And uh, our chief guest uh, was Professor Prakash Pana. Uh, he outlined the introduction and the evolution of English language in the Indian subcontinent. And he also talked about literature in English language or in regional languages. And he even talked about pros and cons of cultural interactions and uh, uh, we are uh, so grateful to him that he uh, came to join us and uh, deliver his uh, short speech. Uh, he's from uh, the English and Foreign Languages University, formerly CIEFL. And also we had our honorable advisors with us, uh, Professor Dr. Masood Akhtar from uh, University of Russia, Professor Mashur Shahid Sain from <coughs> Janginov University, uh, Professor Dr. Himadri Shekhar Roy from Shah Jalal University of Science and Technology, uh, Professor Dr. Sabia Hawk uh, from Fulna University. We are really grateful uh, and we are really honored that you uh, joined the program and you uh, gave your consent to become uh, the advisors uh, of uh, LITSIG. And uh, we uh, really, we, we should mention uh, all the efforts that the core committee of the Society of Bangladesh puts 
in organizing and materializing this grand event. And we can at least say that it was a successful and uh, eventful event even. So we are so thankful and grateful to the president, uh, Professor Saidur Rahman, who is a professor uh, at IML, University of Dhaka. So uh, without uh, him, actually, it was not possible to organize such a successful event uh, today. And we are so uh, thankful to Mr. Vice President, Mr. Hamidul Haq, who is assistant professor and head. He was there in all our, you know, in all our collective uh, efforts, in all our meetings, uh, he was very actively present and he advised us a lot. So we are so thankful to him also. We are uh, so thankful to General Secretary, Dr. Saida Farzana Sultana, uh, who was uh, so active and also who uh, helped us a lot uh, to sort out many things. So who is assistant professor at uh, Universal Liberal Arts Bangladesh. And uh, we are also thankful to Joint Secretary uh, Hasna Khanum, who is senior lecturer uh, at uh, Bragg University. And uh, we are also thankful to Deepti Rahman, who is media relation and publicity secretary, and who is lecturer uh, of English at uh, DIU. And uh, I especially want to uh, give big thanks to uh, to young uh, persons, Akibu Rahman Khan and Sharmin Sultana Rima. So Sharmin Sultana handled digital banner and other technical issues very promptly, I should say. And Akibu Rahman uh, was ever active in all the stages of the program. So uh, they really worked uh, hard to uh, make it a success. And uh, then our new committee that today that was introduced and launched uh, that is uh, our co-convener, uh, <coughs> Shavusti Shaha, who is lecturer at Brack University. So Shavusti Shaha was uh, so active and we are really thankful to her. And today she anchored the whole program uh, so successfully and so, you know, uh, so, uh, so nicely and so actively, I should say. So I think everybody liked her anchoring and uh, she deserves a big thanks from us. And Anna Mohammed, who is lecturer, leading university select, who is also co-convener. So he was also active and he uh, really worked hard and he moderated the workshop uh, session. So we are thankful to him. And another member who worked uh, behind the curtain, uh, who is uh, Famida Ruby, he is MA student, Department of English Language and Literature, Jatiya Kobi Kazi Nurul Islam University. Uh, who is a member of uh, this committee, uh, lit sick committee. So, and there are many others. Maybe I have missed uh, some of the names. Uh, and especially, I, I uh, <coughs> should have mentioned all the uh, names of the core committee. So, we are really thankful and grateful to you all, and uh, many others who helped us in one way or another to organize this event so successfully. So. Uh, I think uh, we, uh, we can give a big clap even. So it's, it, it, was a, it was really a, an, uh, a wonderful experience actually uh, for me and for everyone, Every, everybody will agree with me. So this way I, uh, I should, uh, if Professor Saidur Rahman is present, so if he wants to convey uh, some words, some ending words and then he can close the session as the president. So I'm requesting uh, Professor Saidur Rahman, please uh, just uh, say a few words as the you know ending words and <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dr. Mehdi. I think the vote of thanks is done and I already said in the inaugural session, but uh, it is, uh, I was just imagine my days at JNU a student of literature and for a very pragmatic reason I shifted to language teaching and I still remember my PhD hour ceremony when Shogoti Bhaduri was the head of the department. Uh, today when I attended I was to consider myself as a student of Dr. Shamsha Murtuza which I never got a chance. Thank you Shamsha Murtuza such a wonderful engaging workshop. 
uh, I, I, I was thinking whether we should go back to, uh, you know, physical workshops some days, because that would be such a wonderful to meet Shamsa Muktoza physically and join his classes. Uh, like other things, this is a very different one. As I constantly, as the president, keep on saying, unfortunately in Bangladesh, we have been seeing a, a divide between literature teacher and language teacher for a long period of time. And many of you possibly don't know that I have a master's in literature from JNU. In Bangladesh, most of you know me as an English language teacher. And one of the reasons why I joined Jahanginagar University was to get an opportunity to teach literature, which I couldn't because very short span of time. Uh, my academic career actually shaped under the leadership of Shamsa Muktoza when he was the head of the department. In fact, he, he picked me up and he really encouraged me to join public universities. Those days, the salary of a lecturer was so small compared to the one that I used to get from AIB, but I still believe I took a right decision. So uh, looking at the, this beautiful workshop with the support from ITFO, uh, Literacy Sigur Robert Hill, and across uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University and EFLU Hyderabad. And um, you only imagine how did we do that? Even when we, we kept on re, you know, uh, redesigning our banners every night. I think yesterday it was finalized after getting a reply from Robert Hill. So our young volunteers really, really deserve a, a special thanks. Uh, it is not just us, it is because of them this even was really successful, especially Sharmin Rima, who is an English, English student and uh, has become a professional graphic designer just because you, she started working with us as a volunteer. Many more our students at IML working as volunteers and they are the pillar of this, uh, uh, this association. We are just the front, whatever we are doing. Uh, my vision has been always that uh, literature and language teacher will work together. The Shogoto Bhadurida already mentioned the synergy between language and literature. And this is something that's been missing for a long period of time. So the moment the idea came for uh, designing a new SIG, I proposed that lit SIG will really, uh, we need to hope. And if you remember, uh, I didn't get anybody around me. I, when I proposed that I want to do it, and it has been like, before even the literature association formed. And that Dr. Sheikh Mehdi Hassan came up and he, he volunteered, he said, I'm with you, just start it. So the vision, mission and the uh, constitution written six months back. And then I, I, I was, it was so difficult to find uh, teachers from English language by applied linguistics who were interested in literature. So something that was really tough. And we already organized one uh, teaching literature with Professor Master Shahid Hassan. Uh, so we are going to organize a series of workshops on creative writing, literature, uh, meet the writer series, and we have many more ideas, transfer studies, and many more. And I can see that this is going to be the biggest thing among all the things that we are going to do it. And this is going to be our primary focus as a TISO society. That is a promise that I made to my central committee, that this is the place where we need to work on because applied linguistics, we have other associations who are working on that, but we need to look into it and bring all literature teachers um, with, uh, so that we can work together for reaching the, uh, the goal that we envisage for a long period of time. So thank you so much. Uh, as the president, uh, my heart goes to Sheikh Mehdi Hassan. I know how many nights you didn't sleep for just a simple event that looked like. My special thanks, of course, go to the guest of honor, uh, my Shamsa Muttuza, my own colleague and brother and everything. We share a different kind of rapport. So we keep on sending messages yesterday and he still was texting. So very interesting way of looking at it. Very mesmerizing workshop. And we actually want him as a mentor. I didn't really approach him because he's so busy. I don't know whether he has any time to advise us sometime, but I, I will be happy to get uh, Shamsa Muttuza on board with Lip Singh and it's going to be a great honor for our society. Uh, so with all this um, thanks and everything uh, is already done and it's a great inauguration. Looking back at the, all the inauguration that we did, this was the one of the best program that we have did 
within this COVID time. Thank you everyone for attending and looking forward to work and looking forward all the local international collaboration that we can bring back. And uh, Robert Hill will be sitting with IFL Litsik as part of our associate agreement. We are going to reach out to IFL Litsik so that in future, we can actually do some uh, international conference in literature. Even the Literature Association already approached us. So we are going to organize together uh, one of the best conference in literature very soon. With that positive note, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.